Ian Sack standing alongside Chris Sims and Chris You've now transitioned from being a player to now the broadcast booth. Right. What has that transition been like, and how much did you learn from your father? Well, I learned a lot from my father. I mean, kind of through osmosis, I guess, really, just watching him over the years. Uh, my dad always instilled work ethic in me, so anything you're going to do, you got to be willing to work at it. But uh, I really enjoy it. You know, it's, it's again, just like I, I'm sure you would think with Boomer Esiason or my father, it keeps me in the game. i got a lot of people I know and played with in the NFL, so... Uh, I like doing it, and then I like being able to kind of pass the knowledge off to the people. And uh, how is that learning curve different from, say, the learning curve of going from a college quarterback into the NFL? Uh, that one's a little more steep of a learning curve. Uh, the, the biggest thing about going college to the NFL, oddly enough, of course the playbooks are bigger. The Really the biggest difference is, though, not even the speed of the game. It's really more of the size and speed of the D linemen of the NFL game. You know, you play even at a major university like I went to, Texas, yeah, every week we might play one professional D lineman. Maybe a certain team might have two professional D linemen. But then the first time I got in the field against Carolina Panthers and there was Julius Peppers and four other huge fast guys, that was a difference to me. The size and the closeness of the pocket in the NFL was the biggest adjustment. Now, we have some bright young stars that are entering their rookie season, Deshaun Kaiser, Deshaun yeah, Watson. Right. What do you expect from them? How soon do you think they can thrive on the NFL circuit? Yeah, uh, listen, in this day and age, I think they can do it pretty quickly. You know, Deshaun Kaiser certainly got a good chance to start there in Cleveland because none of those other quarterbacks are worth a damn. So he's, he's, got, a, he's got the leg up there. Patrick Mahomes, the guy in Kansas City from Texas Tech, is the guy that excites me the most. I don't know if he gets on the field, but I think he has the biggest potential to be a superstar, Aaron Rodgers, Brett Farvish. And then Mitch Trubisky is the guy to watch, too. Mitch Trubisky has a chance, I think, to unseat a uh, Mike Glennon if he continues to play here and play well in the preseason. He's got a lot of talent, too. Now, how about Deshaun Watson? A lot of people thought he was the best quarterback coming out of this draft class. Right. What do you see from him in the situation in Houston? Yeah, look, first of all, you know, the, the Texans offense, that's a, the whole, that's the New England offense. That's not an easy adjustment because I, I, I played in that offense. I coached in New England. It's a, it's a totally different language and terminology. He's a smart kid. He's a natural at the position. The biggest thing that he has to work on, and you probably saw this, at the combine, he only threw the ball 49 miles per hour. When there is tight man-to-man -man coverage, can he fit it in with power, drive the ball into small windows? That would be my one question, but that's that's minute. I really think he's a, a natural at the at the position in, in a whole, as a whole. I'm just not sure he unseats Tom Savage right away, right here early in the year. He's got to work on his pocket presence a little bit before I think he becomes a starter in Houston. Now another team that has a, a lot of questions at quarterback, the New York Jets, Bryce Petty, yeah. Christian Hackenberg. Yes. What do you expect from the Jets this year? I know a lot of people aren't expecting much. No, I think the Jets are better than people realize. I mean, they have one of the best front fours in football right off the bat. Uh, you know, the, the, the injury to Quincy and Nunwa is going to hurt any quarterback that's in there. But the Jets aren't going to be just a pushover. For me, the Jets, the plan of attack is you start Josh McCown and you see how you could start off the season. And then if you're one and three or two and four, then you can make the proper adjustment and throw a Petty or a Hackenberg into the mix. All right, now switching over to college quickly. That's now your bread and butter. You got Clemson, the defending champions at number five, Alabama, the powerhouse at number one. What do you see from that dynamic? Right, well, listen, I'm a Notre Dame guy, so that's it. I'm still a elite NFL analyst. So as far as college football goes, I'm a very casual fan for the most part. I do the draft, the first three rounds, pick by pick. So usually after the NFL season, I dive into college football. It will be different for me this year because I'm doing pregame and halftime for Notre Dame. But Clemson, Alabama, the first thing I'll tell you right away is they have it rolling. They got NFL players coming into the system every year. You could see it through the draft. There's really never going to be that year where they're going to go, oh, we're going to take a step and rebuild. No, Clemson expects to be right back in the national title picture with or without Deshaun Watson, right? And then that's the same for Alabama. I mean, we know that. We see that from them every year. Um, the big thing to me is just who's going to be that under-the-radar team that we're not talking about that sneaks into the conversation. Now, wh who do you think could be that team coming this season? You know, I really do think Notre Dame has a chance. If you evaluate Notre Dame, which I've really had to do here uh, recently, they have one of the best offensive lines in college football. They might have the best left guard, left tackle combo in all of college football. Uh, so I look at them up front on the defensive side. They play Georgia week two at home. They get USC at home this year as well. If they win those two games, they're going to be in the conversation. I would look out for them. Awesome. Thank you so much. Chris Sims, 
I'm Ian Sachs.